Starbucks. <laughs> happy Starbucks. It's happy. So, so if you listen, if you hear, like I, you know, I should actually listen for a minute in each quadrant. But I heard vowel sounds, so I'm not going to, like, there. <laughs> but for, see, I started my system. So we always start from the lower right. Lower yeah. right. So, so basically, before well, she had a gown on, I would actually inspect the stomach, check for any scars, any bruising, redness, any abnormalities. So, and then I would ask, ask if she has any, if she's experienced any pain. So, do you have any pain in your abdomen? No, not at all. Okay. And then I would let them, and then we can do. Usually, if you do like light, this is light palpation. Mm -hmm. So, any pain? No, just tickles. That's right. <laughs> and then you can do like deeper. I'm not gonna hurt you, but and if they were <laughs> heavy pain, yeah. I would avoid that deep because yeah, they're gonna exactly. scream. You might be yeah. back for the doctor, yeah, they can or the advanced nurse to assessment. check it. Yeah. Um, I know in the GI books, you know, in specialty, you have to really assess um, at, at the stomach at least five minutes. Okay, well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, in reality, out on the floor, if you can listen for a minute. However, if you hear bowel sounds, you know, and it's pretty active, uh, it's nice and active. I don't think you have to wait the mm -hmm. whole the whole time. But if you're not hearing sounds, I would wait a minute in a quadrant, a minute in the other, because um, you could have absent bowel sounds, okay? And that's a significant mm -hmm. finding. Sometimes you'll hear it in one quadrant, but you can't. However, sometimes the bowel sounds are so loud, you can hear them through the thorax. When you're doing a, your, your chest assessment, you can hear the bowel sounds resonance yeah. through that hole. So mm -hmm. you have to learn the different sounds. Okay. Like mine right mm -hmm. And also if a patient... Um, has surgery, anesthesia, you think about it as if you're studying the patient's you're studying everything basically. So the bowel, it'll take a little while for bowel sounds to come back, but that's one thing that before they're discharged, they need to, you don't want to have a blockage, and then that's why they usually start you out on clear, you know, clear liquids, and then move you up, so. All right, and then I would, I'm not going to, but I would take a quick look at her genital area, make sure there's nothing abnormal, you know, ask her if she's had any discharge or any issues or anything. Yeah, the other thing, sometimes in a hospital, you're doing an assessment, but you plan on giving them a bath later, mm -hmm. whatever. You don't have to, the, 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 no, the, the mm -hmm. perineal assessment or genitalia, whatever, can wait until the morning bath. Okay? Give you a can rather than an acceptance. For some stuff, depending on the patient, if the patient's mobility is limited, and then any type of movement really exerts them, and then they're out of breath. You want to catch it when you're probably if you're having to do something. You might have to do the assessment in part. So you have to know your patient. Otherwise, you're going to fatigue them, mm -hmm. especially when you're part of your patient. You get tired of, of an assessment. Okay, and if that's the case, I'm going to target the most crucial first part, lunch, mm -hmm. and the response. Then I'll target the rest, you know, and the time. If I'm going to fatigue you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, I can do it. No, you can do it here, too. You're basically going to take a look, um, just look at the appearance, make sure there's no redness. Um, okay. This is when you can check for edema. Edema. Make sure they edema. If she had, um, like, varicose veins, I would note that. She got, her legs are pretty good for being there. Hold Nurse, on. your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then you would. <laughs> so then I would just feel, make sure no, no pain. No, no pain. Sometimes you have pain. And then you want to also assess if they have pain on the calves. You know. Yes. So have um, your and see how any she. Pain, anything back there? No, no. Or if they have any redness, you want to. Well, she yeah. just did by by um, by. Um, Flexing my foot was the Holman sign. Just check and see um, if there's any uh, formation of thrombosis or anything like that. And then you could check for capillary refill, but she <laughs> <laughs> even if you do this though, 
Blanche. Not even on the, yeah, if, as long as it's Blanche. And do you have any numbness or tingling in your... Nope. Um, a good sign of peripheral... Which is a sign of And then you would actually do it on the other leg, but I do want to show them the strength. Yeah. Okay. You can do, you can also do like range of motion. I'm not going to, I don't want to put your skirt up, but you can have them do this and this and maybe you can extend or have yeah. them move it if they can, if they have yeah. movement, have them do it and then see. But um, otherwise, you have to move it, okay? And then you can ask him to lift your leg up and then have push against, just to see what they're doing. And then you can also have them pull your toes towards your nose. And then push, like you're pushing on the gas pedal. And so she's checking for strain. And with diabetic patients, and I, uh, and I always emphasize it because we have a large population of diabetes uh, here in the valley, or just anywhere now, especially with baby boomers on the right. Check between the toes. Look at that. Okay? Look and look on behind because you'll find things that they don't even know they have. Yeah. Okay. Because they can't feel. Right. Right. They can't feel. So they've lost sensation. That's pretty much a, yeah. a simple assessment. In the hospitals, you have your daily assessment form. So it acts as a guide. So it was kind of nice before when things were manual, you take that assessment sheet to the bedside and you start working on it. So it helps you prompt. However, now everything's a computer. Okay, everything's computerized. So sometimes you have to remember what to do when you go back to the computer. And then you'll go, oh, I forgot this. And then you go run back. But when you do an assessment, you want to work systematically so that you're not having to come back and say, oh, I forgot this. And then you go back, oh, I forgot that. Well, you're not also bothering and inconveniencing the poor patient or maybe even tiring them. You're losing time that... As nurses, you don't have. We need to learn to work efficiently. And that'll kind of end time, too. <laughs> Any questions? And then when you start advancing, your assessment will hone in to specifics. Or maybe I have a problem, she's going to focus on that and give it probably uh, uh, much more. Okay. <coughs> All right, that's it. I have my glasses somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't give them back to you. See? That wasn't. Oh, there they are. <laughs> they, yeah, I can't see your glasses. All right. Any questions? So you think you can do that? Okay. It takes practice because when you get to the hospital with that real patient, you're going to feel intimidated, scared, or whatever. And all of a sudden, I can't remember whatever. If you have a little cue thing that tells you head to turn, what to look for, I don't care if you carry that with you. I don't care if you carry, you know, something here, like a little cheat note to help you remember, and then you go in and do that, okay? Because I don't expect you to remember right off the bat. You are being bombarded with a lot of information, okay? But that's what you want to do somehow just to get yourself organized and feel like you're organized. Because let me tell you, then those patients pick up on it. Mm -hmm. On the checkoff? Well, you can't bring the cheap note with you, but you will have it and you can look at it outside until you're ready to come in. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So, why don't you guys take a break and then we'll meet in class, what, in about 10 minutes?